<laughs> Good day and welcome. Welcome to NAC TV's Coffee Chat. My name is Lyle Watson, and uh, I'm very pleased to have as our guest today Judy Gabler. Judy is the chairperson for the Nipawan Area Palliative Care uh, Committee, and uh, uh, we would like to share some of the thoughts with you, Judy, on your committee and uh, how it got started and uh, where you're at today and what impact COVID had. So there's a couple thoughts we can start with, <laughs> and uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thanks for asking me, Lyle. Uh, as any volunteer organization now, because we can't be out and about in the community, uh, you know, we uh, don't have the recognition that we might have if it wasn't COVID. So yes. thank you. So. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we want to take this opportunity on behalf of Nipawan area, the citizens in our community and NA, our viewers of NAC TV to thank you for the work that you and your committee do because there's more than one person behind it. And uh, how big is your committee? How many members do you have on your board? Uh, right at the moment, uh, we have one, two, three, four community members. Uh, we have a representative from the ministerial, Beth McDonald. We have Gladys Anderson, who is New Beginnings, which is a grief support group. Yep. Uh, and then we have Mary Ellen Clark, who is our, our coordinator of volunteers and that is a paid position and I know that's a touchy subject sometimes when we say we're volunteers but uh, there's myself Marg Van Buskirk as the vice our secretary now actually we have one vacant position of vice president and Judy Elgert is our treasurer so Laura Lee Harris is our community member yeah so in terms of volunteers and committee members you uh, probably are always looking uh, for new members. Yes, and, those and are the actual committee, but there's uh, multiple, and I'm not even sure what uh, Mary Ellen's numbers are for the actual volunteers that do the sitting yeah. and volunteer their time. And then, of course, we always still have ad hoc members from the staff, the care team managers at the hospital care home, and yeah. then somebody from home care. So, yeah. what uh, what definition of palliative care? Uh, do you work under, is it just one area or is there more than one area of palliative care? We mostly is just to enhance the, the care that is given by the multidisciplinary team that the region has. Uh, so however we can be a support to them. So mostly it is that we do uh, sitting with, to relieve uh, some stress off of the families. So give that's them a end, break. End, end of life. It's more, more uh, not necessarily just end of life. It is palliative care is any time when a serious diagnosis has been made, you can start palliative care at that time. And because uh, sometimes, you know, there's ones in the home and need some support. We do respite in the home so the loved ones can go out and do their shopping. Or we had one that we carried on respite care for quite some time, just yep. so the wife could go to church on Sunday mornings. We just had put somebody in to sit with a client at that time. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, it's not just end of life. Yeah, so. okay, well, I'm, I'm sure maybe some of our viewer, viewers aren't aware that it's available other in other times mm -hmm. too, so that's good. Uh, palliative care, uh, the Nipawa Committee got started quite a number of years ago. Can you give us just a brief background yeah, so on well, how that got started? Actually, it was, uh, there's, always been a form of palliative care done in healthcare facilities but in 1998 um, a need came up at that time uh, we've where the community health director was approached by a, the hospital staff saying that there was a family that was sitting with their dying daughter who which we all know that's not the way <laughs> life should be that parents shouldn't be staying with their child that's dying but it did and she went and she, our community health director at that time had a mental health background so she went to visit with the parents. And that, that was who? <laughs> What's that? And that was who? Oh Mark Van Buskirk. Okay yeah. thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. so yes yeah, she saw a need and she thought what can we do about this? She went back to her office and at the time um, Mary Ellen Clark who had, was quite involved with the local breast cancer support group, was visiting uh, somebody at the hospital and went by her office, called her in and said, 
I've just identified a great need we have in the community. What can we do about it? They sat down, put their heads together. Um, they researched, I guess, and found out that Selkirk had an active palliative care committee. Yep. They went to visit them, and Selkirk shared, you know, different how they got started, and uh, you know, different things about being a charitable organization with them. And so they came back, and Marg said they did a a uh, road and pony show or whatever <laughs> and went around to all service com groups within the, yep. the community uh, at that time of course before we had laptops and all these fancy things for <laughs> the overhead projector they had on and, yeah. and uh, did their presentation just to start raising some money so and we did work under the auspices of the, uh, the health authority at that time when we initially got started yep. And so donation dollars and that went through them. Uh, and that was when we were part of the Marquette Health Authority. And then once we became Assiniboine, they did look into the logistics of and liabilities of different things. Because as I mentioned before, we do have one paid position. So, yep. and there's all the things that go along with paid positions, right? Workers' compensation and yes, all yep. those things. So then they, asked us to kind of separate from them just for the fact of the donation dollars and and uh, have our own local committee so that would have been in probably about 2002 around there when yeah. uh, we became a Cinnaboyne so oh, okay. so since then yeah we've been uh, so we do rely on donation dollars um, and you and are a registered, some, a registered we are charitable. registered Charitable, charitable organization. Yeah. We do do some fundraising. Uh, we've had the way back where a lot of the female local business owners started up a group that called Think Pink oh, and yeah, they I raise money and that's money we still we also look after that money and that's what goes towards the healing garden which is a beautiful place it but is. maybe people in town aren't even aware of it because it's between the hospital and the chemotherapy unit. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Julie Brilla and Debbie McNerney, they keep it up each year. They plant it, they weed it, and other volunteers come and help. I've with heard the a care lot of good it. comments about. Yeah, I, it's I have beautiful. seen it, yeah. and it is beautiful. But I've heard a lot of comments about it. Uh, the what the environment, how mm -hmm. it, it fits the you know the situation. Yeah. You know, so yeah. now, in terms of yourself, Judy, you were. You were a general duty nurse initially when this first started. Yes, I was. Yeah. And then you so, became a department yeah. manager. <laughs> so as the general duty nurse, you know that uh, you always want to make sure your patients are comfortable and that there's, there's support given to the families, but you're torn between what else is going on in the facility. So uh, sometimes, you know, you just don't have the time to, that you want to spend yeah. with them. So. Uh, yes, so we've seen that, and thank goodness for our volunteers now, because that does cover a big need and help there. And then I became the manager, and of course with the Regional Health Authority, it's up to them to make the policies and procedures. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, then that's what the volunteer services, we work under those and within them. So you still work in collaboration right. with, with the health right. authority. Right, yeah. And then, so as when I was a manager, I helped you know, review those policies and procedures and take feedback from the staff on them. And then uh, I've also had family members that we got to use the services when my mom was sick and uh, we wanted to keep her at home as much as we could. And so then we had the respite care yep. while I was working. And then, yeah, and then at the end of life for the night shifts, that's when a lot of our volunteers are put in yeah. is for a night shift to be with the clients. So, yeah. yeah. So and now I, I'm on one of the volunteers. <laughs> so yeah. And you, you volunteer I, at country I matters do a night lot. shifts. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, I commend you for keeping up uh, the spirit of uh, community service and uh, helping people in need. And uh, you've been a good example <laughs> of that, Judy. So. Well, it's, and it's very fulfilling, eh? So. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, COVID, I know, has had an impact on everything. How has it impacted the Palliative Care Committee? Have you been active uh, in the last couple of years? Or? Well, as far as the committee, we still keep meeting. Uh, but as far as the volunteer services, that has been put on hold. 
Uh, we cannot put any volunteer services in at Country Meadows at the moment. Yeah. Um, depending how the restrictions have been coming and going and different things, we have been able to put them in at uh, the hospital and some in community too. Um, Mary Ellen Clark, as the coordinator of volunteers, does have an office uh, at the hospital, which, you know, uh, the health authority has provided space for that. And, but yeah, that she has not been able to work in there since COVID started. So she's been working from home. Any of our literature, the pamphlets and all that, that we had on palliative care or cancer or different things had yep. to be stored away. They couldn't have any publication of anything out and about for, you know, because people would tie, how do you clean it? So, yeah. so that's unfortunate. And uh, even as far as the stocking, you know, a lot of our donation dollars goes to stocking water or cookies or coffee or things that the family and may need that's even you know yeah yeah it just like anybody else it has affected us so so if one of our some of our viewers wanted to get more information on the palliative care services provided mm -hmm. how what's the best way to get that well information it's, it's all always published on the prairie mountain health website okay and if you actually wanted the services, the proper channels to go through is to do a referral. Like anybody can make a referral for palliative care. It can be, uh, you know, it can be done through your family physician and then they send it off to the clinical resource nurse that's covering our area. Um, and then, you know, depending, there's different types of services. Uh, there's the drug program through palliative care, like you, if you can get your oxygen paid for some of the drugs, you know, there's time limits sometimes on those and the clinical resource nurses would have all the information on that. Uh, or is it just that you want some information on symptom and pain management or something like that. So but it would be best to go through them. There's four clinical resource nurses in Prairie Mountain Health, yep. one for Brandon and then three for divide, the rest of the regions divided up for them. Okay. Um, yep. They're very busy because it's not a full-time position for them or it wasn't back when I was <laughs> in 2018 when I retired from here anyway. So, yep. and yep. then there's one that's uh, for volunteer and bereavement care as well. So which, yep that's the person that we work more closely with right now so yeah and who's that person her name's Carla Mitchell and her office is in Brandon in so Brandon yeah okay now in terms of uh, donating if if a person was interested in making a donation uh, how was the best way to go about that yeah you can, it's just through the Nipuan area palliative care that you would make it to and uh, through box 1240 which is the hospital or the health facilities box number and then they just put it in Mary Ellen's little mail slot at the hospital and then uh, yeah so then they she sends out the receipts for tax purposes. For the tax purposes. Mm -hmm. the, the other way uh, I think I've seen this on occasion where after a, a bereavement or a death in the family and the obituaries in the paper and it'll say instead of flowers donations can be made to yes. the Nipua so th Palliative yes. Care Yes, and we do, the funeral homes have uh, envelopes and different things that can be used for that too, so they do have them out at the funerals. Yeah. And, and that's certainly something that we all should, all should consider at some time as to where we want a donation right. to go yes. yeah. and uh, to whom it would benefit yeah. most. And things. it's also, we, d we do uh, get an annual one that, um, so, you know, somebody has very graciously left us in estate planning so that each year we get a portion of uh, some from an estate too. So yeah, yeah there's lots of different ways. We also, at cr just before Christmas, we have uh, the memory bulbs that the tree has put up uh, outside what, what used to be Sears. I'm dating myself here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and you, there's different uh, businesses in town that have agreed to take the donations for us and yeah. for that. So you can uh, buy a bulb for $5 in memory of somebody or yeah. give whatever you want. So Has, has that been pretty well supported? Uh? Well, there's, it's, it's not as well because we used to be able to advertise who did the donating in the banner, but <laughs> 
I don't want to get kicked out of the banner here, but <laughs> due to cost, you know, it, yeah. it started uh, would it take too much to be able to pay for that yeah. room in the banner for it to be um, advertised. So right now, Heather at uh, Harris Pharmacy has been great. Then we just put a list in in the window at Harris Pharmacy with the donators and okay, yeah, at the time. So yeah, uh, and that's uh, in the month of December. Yeah, so it usually starts the end of November and into December up to Christmas. So. Yeah. Now, what is the uh, state of your board members, uh, volunteers? I know that all organizations in all rural communities and probably the cities are struggling somewhat to attract new board members and volunteers. What is your situation? Well, you and we've yours? been pretty lucky th with board members that it's been a pretty stable group. Uh, we just had one recently resign from it, so we are looking for somebody from the community. Uh, so if anybody's interested, you can call me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and um, and our volunteers right at the moment, we uh, for the sitters and that, uh, we seem to be in a stable position. Sometimes when travel was allowed, uh, some our winter months <laughs> sometimes got a little thin because people would go south for the winter and yeah. uh, but right now we're not too bad uh, but we when there is a need for volunteers the, uh, we notify the region because there is a lengthy uh, education process for them we just don't send anybody in that you know because yeah. there's the different things they get some education on emotional support, psychological, yep. um, you know, pain and symptom management, uh, spiritual, yep. you know, there is different modules, about seven modules that uh, that they teach on, so. Uh, but in order to volunteer or to become a board member, you don't need a medical background or a nursing background. No, like definitely it. not. No, I mean, anybody no. can apply. Yeah, for sure. And take those. Uh, well, and sometimes it's, you know, you need the perspective of different yeah. areas, you know, especially yeah. maybe somebody that's had used the services. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's great, so. That would be a, a real mm -hmm. plus, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting, uh, the uh, work you do, and uh, how does, like, when when families get, come to the hospital and, and a person's in, how, how, do, how do they, how do they get in touch with palliative care? Is that Mary Ellen at, right at the hospital then? Or? That's usually because of the visibility that she has being in the hospital. Yeah. The staff is very good and yeah, sometimes we always don't follow the right processes, right? You know, that is supposed to be the referral form is supposed to go to the clinical resource nurse and then the clinical resource nurse is, if, is supposed to notify Mary Ellen if that was the service that they were requesting for sitters. Yeah. But a lot of times, um, it's just easy for them to go to Mary Ellen and say, you know, we need somebody or uh, at times something's happened that it's, you know, like that comes into emergency, a bad accident and somebody's in bad shape and um, their family's there waiting. So yeah, they just go and say, can you look after the family at this time? And oh, okay. so, you know, the, the visibility of Mary Ellen being in the facility three days a week, the way it was, was, uh, you know, Yep. Yeah, so. Uh, you mentioned respite earlier, uh, Judy, and with the, in, you know, our society and our healthcare system is uh, encouraging people to stay home longer and mm -hmm. help, you know, encourage families to look after their loved ones. And uh, I think that is all a very positive thing, but there's evidence uh, from time to time that we see a burnout in the caregivers. Now, and, does that and that's what we were there. We want to help because that's the same as, you know, even the sitters that you sit with the family at, in the hospital or something, you know. But and we, nobody knows how long it's going to take. You know, things can go on for days or weeks or months or whatever, and and that's a very uh, possible thing that family, loved ones, caregivers are getting burnt out. So. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully that there's somebody else that recognizes it in them and will say, hey, there are services out there that can help you. That yeah. And there's more that uh, people are going for the death at home too. So, um, so yeah, so that's, those are the kind of things that we want to help. We want to help prevent the, the burnouts and, the, yeah. and give as much support to loved ones and caregivers that we can. 
the doctors and the nurses are there usually for the, the yeah. patient. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned the spiritual end of, uh, aspect of it and the uh, um, grief aspect of it and new beginnings for a person or a family that have lost mm -hmm. a loved one. And you mentioned that Gladys Anderson is on your committee and she does work with mm. the uh, new beginnings. Yeah. Can you just give us a little brief background on that while we're talking about health care today? Or? Yeah, well, and that's it. Like, it, it, uh, with this emotional support, it doesn't stop at the time of death. Uh, sometimes there's more need following. So, yeah. um, you, know, you know, there's a, there's the different services. I believe the funeral home has, like, the Blue Christmas at Christmas time and that. And, yeah, there is... I, I can't actually say how Gladys gets her referrals yeah, yeah. to that. Um, and if, I'm sure Mary Ellen gives some of those. And I know Mary Ellen does follow up even post death yeah. that uh, and within a year and different things just to acknowledge, you know, how are you doing and different things. So and, and you said there was a, a representative from the Ministerial Association. Yes, we used to have it that uh, you know, it would they'd go through their group that they would pick their representative, and we meet as a committee quarterly. And there was a time that it, to give all the ministers an uh, an idea of what we do, they would send a different one each we, each uh, meeting. But we needed some consistency, so and of course sometimes we're short on ministers too, just yeah, like yeah. any other profession, right? That yeah. so uh, Beth has been our stable one <laughs> yeah lately so yeah so um, of course we don't push the spiritual part on anybody no. you know we give them the option would you like somebody and if that denomination didn't have anybody then yeah so Beth would be the one that we would yeah. contact if they wanted yeah so there's quite a wide spectrum that you cover uh, when people are in need mm -hmm. and I, I think that you should be uh, uh, complimented on the work you do because it's uh, uh, it's a tough time for families. And it is and uh, you know like we said be earlier that uh, if you're not faced with that and have to don't have to deal with it you're maybe not aware of what is available yeah. out there in the community for you so. Well that's uh, one of our purposes as a Access TV is to talk to people like yourself and uh, make our viewers aware or help them be aware of some of the services that are available. Yes. Because we're very fortunate in this community that we do have a lot of services. We are, and uh, I can't s stress enough, like from the staff point of view, the importance of the palliative care workers and sitters that, uh, you know, I, I know as sitting in there as a um, volunteer, you hear the bells going off and different things, especially at night, because usually the staffing levels are lower at that time. Yeah. So, you know, um, and, and the patients often aren't the able due to the pain they're in or the, you know, the sedation of that to be able to ring a bell yeah. or to call out or if there's some confusion, you know, they're trying to get out of bed, well, they could be on the floor if there wasn't somebody there. Yeah to uh, keep an eye on them. So, you know, it's just, uh, I know the staff really appreciates <laughs> the palliative care because I've also been on the other end when there hasn't been somebody there, so, yeah. 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 Uh, thinking about the increase in our senior population, uh, I'm the beginning of the baby, I'll date myself, <laughs> I'm the beginning of the baby boomers. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a baby boomer. I'm bo a baby boomer <laughs> too. <laughs> so there's, there's quite a number of us in that generation yeah. that are, are getting uh, to a point uh, at some point in time we might might need palliative care. Do you see an increase in the demand for palliative it care? It has been busy, yeah. It's, and it goes in spurts too, so uh, just like anything else, right? But it, yeah, it has. it is a busy uh, organized <laughs> group of that and, and uh, it's you know, and it's not just the baby boomers when you read the obituaries in the paper that's uh, no. a lot, you know, the, lots of young ones too that yeah. are dying way too soon. So Yeah, yeah. So we have to, uh, we have to uh, encourage and uh, keep the involvement of our citizens 
as volunteers in all organizations, mm -hmm. but in particular this one also, to keep it going yeah. to, to meet the needs of the future. Right, and that's one thing we notice with our volunteers too. A lot of them are older as well, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them do have the nursing background in that too, so, um, you know, which is an asset to sitting, that uh, yeah. we are, we're not a hands-on care we're the eyes and the ears kind of thing for the patient, right? Yep. We're not to do any hands-on care, so what we can get up and run and get somebody that can do that for them. So. Yeah. But sometimes that time uh, by a volunteer or an individual spent with a senior, whether it's a respite or even in palliative yeah. care, someone there with their hand on their yeah, shoulder. Yeah, just holding the hand, yeah. The, yeah. It goes a long ways in yeah. terms of the mental yeah. uh, piece of the mind for the patient. It sure it? does, yeah. yeah. Well, our, as usual, Judy, our, our time goes quickly, yeah. but uh, we've uh, covered a number of things, and I hope that uh, we've made our viewers aware of some uh, things that maybe they weren't, or uh, maybe there's interest out there, hopefully, that uh, they would contact you. But uh, I would like to uh, sum up our program and our coffee chat today, Judy, with uh, your thoughts uh, that you would like to share with our viewers in terms of your organization and experiences. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a very fulfilling um, committee to be on. I think you see that uh, how it has helped a lot of people. Um, and we're coming up to getting a new facility finally. <laughs> that, oh yes. And uh, so you know um, the layout right when you retrofit an old facility where the palliative care room where the patient is at one end of the hall and the family room is at the other end yeah. uh, you know and I'm sure with the new one they've designed it to those would be closer together but of course there's always the furnishing of these rooms so yeah. uh, whatever ways a, a charitable organization can help out the health region to uh, furnish some of these and fund some of the equipment and that uh, we'll be looking at that so I just sent off a letter to Brian Schoenberg <laughs> yeah. so it, you know letting him know you know we're, we're willing to help out with that so and hopefully he'll say maybe you can have a say in <laughs> how the room's decorated or something. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that would be a yeah. nice, uh, nice aspect, yeah. Yeah, it's always good to have the aspect of the ones actually doing the work in the rooms, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> but uh, it's obvious, Judy, in order for you, your committee, and volunteers to support the community's need, you need the community support in, in volunteers yes, and, yeah. and charitable yes, donations. Yeah, too. we could never do anything without the donors. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, with that thought, Judy, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of our uh, Nipuan area community and uh, NAC TV to say thank you for joining us today and uh, we wish you well in the future and uh, we hope you get a couple new board members uh, out of their our chat today yeah. and, and well, some and new volunteers. Uh, yeah well just thanks for having me to bring that awareness to the community again too for our committee so thank no, you. It's our pleasure so uh, thanks again for joining us. Well I hope that you've uh, enjoyed our coffee chat program today with uh, Judy Gabler, the chairperson of the Nipah and Area Palliative Care. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to uh, give uh, Judy a call or call Mary Ellen uh, Clark at the hospital and uh, the information would be made available pretty quickly, I yeah. think. And, uh, and we appreciate that you take the time to uh, join us today for uh, this coffee chat. And uh, until next time, uh, stay safe, stay healthy and stay warm. Have a good day.